So I've been incarcerated in my life probably seven or eight times. And uh, my mom was sick when I got sentenced. She was actually very, very sick. And so I used to call my mom every single day while I was in prison, you know, and she would kind of be worried if I didn't call her. And at this new prison, they have new rules. So you're on lockdown in your cell for seven days before you can get out. So I, I can't even like get on the phone to call people. You know, I'm locked in my freaking cell and my mom had a stroke. You know, I can't even call my mom. I'm kind of mad at this point because I don't know what's going on. I haven't heard anything. And um, and I, I tell them that I'm my mom's only son. I'm the beneficiary. I'm the I'm the point of contact. I'm you know what I mean. Like I'm the one that has say on who gets to see her. You know, even if I'm in prison. And my mom's in in all kinds of failure. You know, liver failure, heart, cardiac arrest, um, thyroid cancers, messing up. She is just everything's going wrong. And so we pulled the plug. Um, it's very, very hard to process. I still haven't, I guess I just work. I work a lot. Um, so I've, I've created start with the goal. Um, I, as I said, I started other things before, but we'll start with the goal when they come into the unit and the caseworker had asked for ideas for a program. I was at a time where I needed something to work on and something to prevent people from going back or help people getting out or, you know, I tried to use my situation because I really could have been in a very, very, like, fuck it mode, you know? You have to make a choice like I had to. I got in numerous fights because I was in that I don't give a fuck, crab in a bucket party mode. Only after I lost my last remaining immediate family member, my beautiful mother, Rita Joyce Crawford, did I realize how serious my situation had been. I had put myself in a predicament that I was totally unprepared for. At 25 years old, I have no family left. I have never had to work a nine to five for more than a month. And now that I am on my own, it's either work a nine to five or go to school. I hope you do not have to be put in the type of situation I am in in order to realize that it's not a party. And at some point, you have to grow up. When I sat down and actually put the pen to the paper, it was a way for me to deal and process with the emotions. So some of the things that I couldn't process mentally or tried to avoid, I was able to actually go through them line by line and, and express myself in a way that um, is sometimes easier to do than in just talking to somebody prison won't help you or it's not going to help you it's not built to help it's built to control so I think it's important for art programs to be available to prisoners because in such a sterile environment such a controlled environment where you have such a huge lack of control for growth to occur for true growth to occur you have to be able to take ownership of your predicament you have to be able to take ownership of, of your situation I believe art programs would give them would give inmates would give participants the ability to take ownership of their situations and setting instead of letting their situations own them so if you enter prison especially young and you're not you're not savvy on rehabilitation you're not savvy on the system or how it works you're not savvy on prison etiquette you could different definitely get in there and come out worse than you went in um, i was incarcerated as a youth in this detention center um, my family went through the system and we failed to receive certain services that might have helped us in the long run and now coming Working here, that's my big huge thing, is getting youth involved with things other than themselves, where we can connect youth to people that have went through similar things, to other youth that are going through things and have groups where they could discuss their, their loss and what they're doing proactively, have them where they could come report out on, on their involvement in the community, their involvement. I think that would be essential to really improving outcomes for our youth. I've also been able to use my experience here. I told my supervisor as soon as I started my 10 month term here through Public Allies, um, I told her I wanted to start a nonprofit. My goal was to end the school to prison pipeline in New Mexico or seriously disrupt it somehow, you know? I wanna, I wanna 
stop youth from going to prison, from dropping out of school and ending up in prison. I'm a direct statistic from this. And what we have to do to make the world listen, we have to make it apparent that there's an issue. I mean, we've been compassion fatigued for so long, just seeing death and, and devastation that I think that the real issues haven't been addressed, which is that we're each individually not doing enough. We are not doing enough. As the clock counts down, my mind begins to race. My legs and arms feel dreary with built up anticipation. Tick, tick, tick. I can almost hear the seconds as they tick off the clock. What to do, what to do. So many choices, not enough chances. No room to err because I burn all three strikes up in one go. What to do, what to do. There are two options at this fork in the road. The right path might be the wrong path, and the left path might be all that there is left. Which path is which, I guess only time will tell, and the clock keeps counting down.